Not the beast! Put the bunny back in the box. One, two, three, uh! Five, six! Nick Cage doesn't act real well because he overacts, and this I know for sure! But does he really want to or expect to have us enjoy this at all? Don't try to tell me he's good because the thought alone is killing me right now. <laughs> Thank God for mom and dad for being somewhat Thank good God for so we don't go mad. Hey, Nick Cage. Hey, Nick Cage. No, Nick Cage. Nick Cage. Sorry. <sighs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to the We Gage... Oh, ooh, I'm off to a rough start after that. Welcome to the We Gage Cage podcast, where we watch every Nicolas Cage movie ever made, from worst to best, according to your IMDb ratings, in an effort to determine whether or not he is a good actor, because neither of us are familiar enough with his work. Not enough. I'm your host, Brian Ambrosius. And with me, as always, the Ronald Mac McDonald to my Charlie Kelly, Brock Kircher. Hi. That's a, that's a It's Always Sunny reference. It is. Good I didn't know. You. Good for you, Charlie Kelly. Can I, I tell you something? Yeah. Right off the bat? Uh, yeah. Hi. Welcome, everybody, to Regage Cage. <laughs> I was clapping for your musical interlude there, and I hurt my fingies today on a hike. And so, like, my knuckles are bruised to, to, to all heck. And Your that fingers. was a that was a wrong choice to clap because my knuckles really took the brunt of that clapping. Your fingies, my fingies, my 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 pretty little fingies. Dude, it's been a while since I had to do an intro because we recorded the last app pretty early and like I should have uh, rehearsed uh, the intro a little. And then we had the wives. What about the? I wives? mean, oh I, yeah, I can. I I don't know if you were worse than Leah, but <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding. I just went with it. So that was an It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia reference. I feel like I had to eventually get it out because of uh, Charlie Kelly myself. I didn't know whether to make you Mac or Dennis. I'm I'm a Mac because I, I went with I have Mac because I have the mass. Yeah, he's always he's always working out and stuff. And Dennis yeah, is more. I... What? Keep, go go ahead. I was just gonna say Dennis is like taller and like the leader, and you're kind of the leader of our group or our friendship. So it could have gone either way. Yeah, um, I'm more of the Mac only because one of my favorite lines from Mac uh, from that show is where he he was getting fat and Mac is fat. And so he's like, I'm, I'm, culti- I'm cultivating mass because he yeah. wants to bulk up. He's like, I'm cultivating mass. And Dennis tells him, you should stop cultivating and start harvesting. <laughs> and so speaking of, I, I feel like I've been harvesting mass uh, lately. So... Um, I've, I've been on a real workout kick. I think I mentioned it on previous podcasts and I, I know that, uh, you know, you've kind of brought it up in, in the past, IRL. but, uh, I've, I've, uh, I've been able to officially announce that I have lost a hundred pounds from Damn! when I was at my heavies. Um, yeah, Dude, you so I've good. been, I've been harvesting my mass, man. You look and like I, um. I saw a picture of myself at a water park, and I was kind of disgusted. And then I saw a picture of you, like, the next day. Like, you were out on a hike or something. Like, you were clothed, but I was just like, look yeah. at Brock, man. So you inspired me. I've been working out four days in a row now. Well, I'm glad. You're like, shit. I'm not going to. I'm going to golf clap you. <laughs> there you go. Hard not, clapping. It hurts. Not that I want to take away from your 100-pound loss. No, no, no. My four days of working out is, like, on a comparable <laughs> level. But I'm just saying, like, I saw you, and I saw me, and I was like, oh, Brian. Well, You're a third, to third our, year lumpy dumper. According to our gym teacher friend, John Keepers, shout out John Keepers, uh, you know, if you work out four days in a row and don't have abs by then, you're doing something wrong. So, Hey, do you remember a few podcasts ago when we were talking about our funny jokes about like um, there's only two kinds of people in the world? No, because we never make any funny jokes on this podcast. <laughs> this is serious Dude, business. I, I, I had to look up the binary one that because there's was... two types of people in this world. Yeah, yeah. I had to look because up the binary one. Because it was a Nick Cage one. line about how there's men of action and everyone else. And everyone else. 
the binary one, I actually think it's more meant for um, get that chapstick on, bro. Get that I'm chapstick letting on. Letting you do your joke. No, I know, but I want you to yeah, get lubed up. You know, like get mm-hmm. get ready. Mm-hmm. I will say that we have our no shirts grapes on today, this week. baby. Just chapstick. <laughs> we have baby, our shirts the on this moistest week. Moistest so. lips. <laughs> the moistest. Anyway, I think this binary joke is more meant for uh, reading because it doesn't sound as well when you read it out loud. But it's um. There are only ten types of people in the world. Those who understand binary and those who don't. Boo! You stink! <laughs> <laughs> That's not a real laugh. Everybody knows my real laugh is like... <laughs> Everyone knows my real laugh. I laugh way more than you. <laughs> I, I'm, I, yeah, I, I laugh. I giggle. Ten I is two in binary. <laughs> That's zeros, the joke! Baby. It's ones and zeros. That was a very long pause. I don't. That I'm was a, that was a that was a long uh, build up for that payoff. That no, payoff. I know that's what I mean. Like once I read it, I was like, oh, this isn't as good as I thought it was. <laughs> well, it's better than Nick Cage's Men of Action and everybody else. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Should we jump into this movie? Is there anything else you want to talk about? Oh God, there is nothing else I want to talk about except. I think I need a haircut, especially after watching this movie. But let's get into it. Hey, dude, actually, I have something to say. We what? we got like a foot and a half of snow this weekend. I, you were in Arizona and you got snow, I saw. Well, we didn't get snow in Arizona. So I took a little, I like I said, I just got back from a hike, literally just walked in the door. And I rushed home because I just had to record this podcast. The It was so intense. I just I just needed to get this off my chest because it's been four days since I've watched Outcast, And um, I took a little weekend getaway with the wife. We went up to Sedona, Arizona. And uh, that is up in the mountains. And so, yeah, they had, they had a ton of snow. There was actually one road that was closed um, kind of past Sedona that you – now, uh, to put it into perspective, to put it into like Minnesota terms – it was like a dusting that they just saw couldn't it. handle, so they I saw snow. shut down the road. And uh, and the last couple of days, we just went on a couple hikes, and the one today was supposed to be, I, th- I think, like six miles round trip. My watch tells me that I hiked nine, so I don't know where the extra three came from. I know where. It was out back in like all, all sorts of snowed, and it was like these canyons, so we were like deep between these mountain walls where like the the sun couldn't get through so yeah there was about like two three inches of snow and didn't you get lost isn't that where the extra three miles came from that was the day before so that was saturday <laughs> oh. saturday saturday we uh we took like a pretty short like mile and a half hike up to this devil's bridge which spiked the crap out of my anxiety so it's this like natural rock formation which is a bridge and maybe like three or four feet wide at like its most narrow point, which seems fine. And people go out onto the bridge and then they take photos from like the cliff wall, which if you're on the cliff wall, you should be safe. Should be safe, but it had snowed and it was slippery as crap because there was so much mud. And there's all these people going out onto the bridge and taking photos, including Emily. I was not brave enough to go out onto this bridge because all I can see when I'm looking at the bridge is like how far down. I looked down. I did the number one rule not to look down. And I looked down and I was like, there's nope. no way I'm falling off this bridge. And there were so many people. It was so crowded. It was so slippery. And I was beholden to the conditions. And and the conditions told me, don't get your ass out on that bridge. There's too many like teenagers and college kids running around with Chuck Taylors on. Chuck Taylors are not hiking shoes. Chuck Taylors are like the most slippery well, shoe that you could ever wear. If they're on the bridge and they're fine, that should mean if you have your hiking shoes on, you should be fine. I did. I had like. Is this bridge I, safe? Have people it, died? Probably. I haven't looked up the, the the statistics because, like, I honestly could only imagine people dying, and I did not want to see somebody die. Well, so I had to safe. get away from this bridge as soon as possible. That doesn't but, like, seem right, man. It is there a net like, underneath catching people? No, not at all. Under the right conditions, I think that this bridge is fine. These were not the right conditions. So on the way back, again, it was a mile and a half back, and we were like, well, that's not long enough for a hike. Let's go on like this little kind of longer trail that eventually loops back. And we hit a fork in the road that was 
left toward parking and right toward the chuck wagon trail. And we were like, well, we know we want to go on the chuck wagon trail. I had, I had, had no. that false confidence to no. Emily that said, like, hey, don't worry. I'm a cartographer. I know what I'm doing. And I don't Bad know if choice. anybody's noticed in listening to this podcast, but I can kind of, like, sell some bullshit when I need to. And I said, let's take a right. And we ended up walking about three miles in the wrong direction to the point where we got up to the top of this cliff. And we had not seen anybody. Like, the rest of the trail was packed. We didn't see anybody for three miles. And I was like, there's something slightly off about this. And so you were trying to get to your car. Instead of going towards parking, well, you were just technically like, no, no, we need this other trail. Technically, it was a different parking lot. It was a different parking lot that then eventually linked up to our parking lot. Uh, but we completely bad. went away from parking and we walked three miles in the wrong direction. So all in all, this weekend, I probably hiked like 20 miles total and only meant to go in like hiking five. So nice. Good work, yeah. man. Got, got a good workout in. <laughs> yeah, you did. Definitely. Shedding you those pounds, even, baby. You don't even have that shirt off, man. Oh, uh, no. It was too cold to pop the shirt off during the hike. Oh, okay. All uh, right. Well, we can get into it now. This might be our shortest episode ever because uh, this I don't feel like there's a lot to talk about with this movie. Every but time we say that, it lasts forever. Uh, we go an hour without Nick Cage. I mean, all right, let, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So, yeah, uh, we mentioned last time. Oh, by the way, I should say, um, last week when I looked it up right at the end there, and I was like, oh, weird, Hayden Christensen. Mm-hmm. In my head, I was thinking of Hayden Penetier and uh, What? That would have been a lot better. God, you are terrible. With <laughs> What's wrong with Haydens? And and people and names. <laughs> They're both Hayden. I'm not that far off. But in, like my initial thought was like Hayden Penetier has a movie with Nick Cage, and then I realized it was Hayden Christensen. I was like Hayden Christensen has a movie with Nick Cage. Yeah, and I was about to say that's not much better. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, what what did you want to say about Hayden Christensen? I'm much more. Like appreciative of the fact that it's Hayden Christensen than Hayden Panettiere. No, you like I thought you were saying something about hair. Oh, I love Hayden Christensen. I think he's gorgeous, dude. We're back and, to CMM, and I yeah no he is. I mean he's borderline CMM. He can step Chad in. Chad Michael and Murray. They're, they're yeah they're pretty like interchangeable for me, but Hayden Christensen is a gorgeous human being. He looks good. He you looked. Know- Fantastic! You know who he else was... I kept thinking he looked like? Who you said I look like is Nick Va- Vile? Nick Vile. Like there yeah. were certain, like the curly hair kind of, because he's got the head shaved. He's got like a thick mohawk. Okay. Um, chunky mohawks. I'm I'm in it for the chunky <laughs> mohawks. If I could have a chunky mohawk right now, I would have that chunky mohawk. That's the hair. He his hair in this movie. <laughs> Is like my ideal haircut, and I, it's a little curly. It's like a little like a Jufro or something, almost like. So, so the film that we watch is Outcast. It is oh from, yeah, we should say that it is Outcast from 2014. Um, hey, hey, yeah. It stars Hayden Christensen, and it is essentially his movie that Nick Cage pops 100%. in and out of. I mean, it is. Nick Cage it is, is only in like 10 percent of this movie. I'd we say. get. We get a couple minutes of Nick Cage early on, and then, like I said, it's an hour before he pops back up. And let me tell you, it is a long hour. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, right, right off the top here. Right right off the bat. But Hayden um, Christensen looks good. Besides his looks, how did you feel he did? Okay. Because he is obviously notorious for ruining Star Wars. Star Wars fans hate him. Mm-hmm. As Anakin Skywalker. Mm-hmm. So what what did you think about... He, he doesn't have a lot of other movies. I looked it have up. Have you ever seen the movie Jumper? I have not. Okay. It's it's like from 2000... I know what it is. 10, 12, whatever. Yeah, they, and, they can yeah, transport and like he's got, people, teleport. Yeah, superpowers where he can essentially yeah jump and transport, teleport. Um, I don't hate Hayden Christensen. Yeah. If that I... if that turns everybody off to this podcast, so be it. But I will go on record to say I don't hate Hayden Christensen. I watched all of the Star Wars movies too because I kind of wanted to like gear up for um, Last Jedi, and so I watched you know one in whatever order. I, nerds, okay, fine, come at me. It's fine. Start Our at Twitter's four. open. Our Twitter's four open. Four to six. Come one at to three. me. I went. I went. Phantom Menace. Through uh, until 
And New then Hope, I even baby. watched Rogue you One. New Hope. I watched Rogue One in the. Uh, oh, what are you doing? The order that you're supposed to and and whatnot. And so that's then I like went, eating your dessert before New your Hope your Empire, main course. Last Jedi, whatever. It's it's fine. Jedi returns. I mean, excuse me. Or Return of the Jedi. I I really okay. Anyway, I I agree that he was not great in the prequels. We'll call him. I agree that he wasn't great in two and three. But like, did he ruin him? No, I don't think no. he did any worse than than Natalie Portman did. And if anything, I kind of don't like her more than I don't like Hayden Christensen. The script and the characters are what ruined it. George Lucas ruined it. Yeah, I uh, there's there's this comedian that I follow yeah. um, that I really like named Jacob Siroff who defends the prequels to the death, and he will argue and fight anybody. So if he wants to. To get into a Twitter battle, uh, I'll go for it. But again, I don't think that Hayden Christensen was that bad. And you know, and you know what I'll say? I don't, I don't think, think the, the prequels first three are, are that, that bad. I don't think the first three are good. Four through six, I don't think they're that good. I don't think they're. they're, they're, they're you don't think they hold they, up? They deserve all you don't the think that they're that like the Bible of all these films. No, I don't think they're that good. I watched four through six a few years ago because I really never watched them growing up. So as an adult, I was like, sure, let me see what the hype is about. I didn't care for them. I, sure. What, so what? when the prequels came in, so when one, two, and three came in, you were just like, I didn't watch them. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. But the thing is, I got through four and like, six, and I was so bored, and I knew one through three were worse. So I was just like, screw it, I'm done. People gotta like pick these panties out of their their wad. Like they gotta unwad their panties. They gotta like pick it out of their butts and just like realize that the the Star Wars original trio movies of four, five, and six. Like, aren't this sacred text that, like, you can besmirch with anything? It's it's a freaking movie franchise. And any other movie in the franchise can do whatever it wants. It doesn't have to, like, S the D of the first three films and, like, pay homage to them while lifting it to new heights. Like, anytime they try to stray too far, the nerds revolt. Anytime they try to, like... Doing the exact same movie, which happened with Seven, the nerds revolt. Like the nerds are always gonna revolt. Right. They're never gonna be happy. So I, I Hayden Christensen I is fine. No, when it comes to this movie, Wars. Hayden Christensen was Here. fine. He was All right. fine. All right, hold on. I think he's fine. I I want to. I I don't need to keep gorgeous saying, hold to stare on, at. But. but I, I want what I was gonna say is I didn't think he was that bad either. And here's what I'm noticing is. Me and you don't have a lot of history with Nicolas Cage. And I think when you go into this with fresh eyes, you don't have these biases against the the co-stars. You don't have these biases against Nick Cage. Like, I thought that Hayden Christensen was fine. And I go online, and I see all the reviewers are bashing him. They're bashing Nick Cage. For this but movie? Then, yeah. <sighs> but then here's the other end of it. I'll fight you go him. On IM, you go on IMDb, you read the, the user reviews, and there are tons of people giving this movie 8, 9, 10 because they love Nick Cage. And I think that comes from them liking Nick Cage in the 90s and his good Ugh. times. And I think they're just blinded, and now they're just like, oh, no, it's Nick Cage. It's a good movie. Like, it's not a good movie. No. It, this movie is not a good film. There's a reason why it's a 4-4. This movie is not a good film. This movie is not a good film. There's a reason why it's a 4-4. There's a reason why we're watching it at it's the not, point in time that we're watching enough. it. That's not low enough. These scores aren't low enough, I don't think. Uh, Freaking Doggy Dog You're the is one a giving four. Doggy Dog like a four star. No. You? I gave Doggy Dog a two. Uh, I gave it a one because I had to. <laughs> so, to update, <laughs> folks, you can't give a zero sense. star on IMDb. I had to give it a one. Dying in the Light also got a one, and I think the Humanity Bureau also got a one. So now my scores just look like I hate all the Nick Cage movies, but I hate that one the most. All right. So, guys, we're in Middle East. It's the 12th century. They tell us this. (sighs) I'm not going to Sip on my haterade. (laughs) I I had a hard time following the first 15 minutes or so because Leah had sex tape on in the background. Cameron Diaz and uh, Jason Siegel, and like Cameron Diaz's butt kept popping up, and then Jason Siegel's butt popped up, and I was just, I kept kind of straying from my laptop, just like, hmm, look at those butts. I couldn't watch the first fifteen minutes because I had my own sex tape on, and oh, okay. I was like, here's my butt, here's Hayden Christensen's hair, and it was a toss up between which one was more beautiful. 
Um, so Hayden Christensen, my first notes are just that he looks good. Nick Hayden Cage Christensen is, can get it. Oh, Nick Cage. He can get it. For, first thing he does is yell. That, that's literally one of the first things he does. Our Nick Tro is him yelling. They're like in a battle. They're, they're, Nick they're, Tro, it, they're have, invading a city. Yelling at Jacob. So we get a, a little cue card or whatever that tells us that this is the Middle East in the 12th century. And it's during the Crusades. So yeah, so Nick and uh, Hayden, H.C., are um, crusaders, and they are invading some Middle Eastern co- country, and basically they slaughter everybody there. Here is where Hayden Christensen uh, beats Nick Cage in this movie. Their accents. I believe oh, Hayden Christensen's, and Nick Cage just absolutely. sounds like a drunken like British Scot. Like he's supposed to be British, I think, but he's got Scottish like. It sounds a little Scottish. It he sounds switches a little from Scottish. He, he sounds a little Nick Cage. He sounds way too Nick Cagey. Oh, there's times where he doesn't even give a shit. He just as cut. Yeah, he it's speaks just, his normal it's, voice. It's all over the board. Uh, um, and that's what he does. Anytime he does an accent, he can't hold it. He's not a good enough actor, people. No, he's not. And yeah, Christensen they talk about the whole movie. They talk about how he's so he gets into his method acting and. And he gets into such oh, character, and he'll never break the characters. And it's like, yeah, that might have been. Not you know, anymore. There was one on. reviewer on Rotten Tomatoes who said that this film feels like the change from that kind of quirky, fun Nick Cage that they love to like a more sad version of him. And I was like, dude, this is Castle <laughs> Period. This could be the kickoff of Castle Period because this is 2014. Uh, yeah, this might have been like when he was just taking whatever role came up. Because anybody could have been in this film aside from Nick Cage. Truly, it could be a Gerard Butler film. I'm sorry, do you know who that is? Yes, I know who Gerard okay. Butler is. Okay. Hey, uh, by it the way, it could, have been, the it could have been like Liam Neeson. It could have been anybody, it, but we're, it was Nick Cage. We're bearing the lead a little bit here. Uh, Nick Cage has a uh, ponytail. In Nick this Cage movie. has a a uh, top knot. But is the appropriate haircut, like terminology, and a beard. That- and he's Widow's got a beard. Peak. The Widow's Peak is on its max, though. Uh huh. The Widow's Peak leads into the ponytail, but holy crap, that's like going all the way back to the back of his head. It is hard to <laughs> devote, like, to d- divert your attention from how beautiful uh, Hayden Christensen is in order to look at how awful <laughs> Nick is. And but the thing is, you don't see Nick's hair at first because he has a helmet on with like the little right. nose piece. With the right. little nose, like the the nose piece over the bridge of his nose, which does how has that ever been like proven that that was an effective helmet to wear back in like the Middle Ages? You know, maybe if someone comes up and is trying to poke your eyes, you got the thing uh, in the middle. The or like if somebody swings a sword at your face oh. and it hits that like right there, <laughs> does that help? But then it could get the your eyes, and I I think that does help. It's just I, like a football helmet, man. Like there sure. are certain with the crossbars. Spaces. Yeah, the crossbars, like, yeah, they got to be in certain places. Um, sure. I don't know. Nick Cage ends up having, like, a moral crisis. He sees Hayden, like, getting he ready to slaughter. Hayden in a room with a bunch of dead kids and then a woman, like, bleeding from the throat. And yeah. so Nick Cage thinks that Hayden slaughtered all these children, which was an excellent callback to a room full of murdered little Padawans. And I was just like, <laughs> Bravo, bravo, good for you guys. Nice. Um, now it cuts back to these Asian people, and uh, well, it fast forwards three years in the future. Does it? Yeah. It, I don't and know. now we get a title card that Cam- says Cameron Diaz's Far butt was East. up there, dude. She's on those oh. roller skates. I mean, I mean, do you just want to review sex tapes? Because like <laughs> I saw that movie about five years ago, I could probably go pretty verbatim about what happens in that one too. I love, I love when she's on her roller skates though, and Jason Siegel's just like. Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, this is so fun. I'm so excited. Because they're a married couple. They have kids. He's just like, yes, yeah. I'm so happy. We're having sex. Okay. I like Jason Siegel. He's a cool guy. I like how this is going to be outcast with a little sprinkling of sex tape. So <laughs> Only for 15 minutes or so because then Leah had to clean because my brother's coming <sighs> to visit. Wow. I, I mean, okay. Tell us as much sex tape as, as you can. Work it in That's there it. as much as you can. That's it. That's it? And then I saw Jason Siegel's butt once. Butts and roller skates. All right. Yeah. So for okay. those of you who want to watch Sex Tape instead of Outcast, feel free. Please. No, please do. Please do. Um, okay, so there's also this thing where basically uh, Nick Cage has sworn an oath to, to Jacob's daddy 
Um, so Jacob is Hayden Christensen's character's name, and Ghislaine is Nick Cage's character's <laughs> name. And he so came yeah, up, he came up with that himself. So Ghislaine, Ghislaine has sworn an oath to Jacob's daddy. So you get the sense that Ghislaine is basically Hayden Christensen's or Jacob's uh, like mentor. So he's like his protector. And so to, just to be clear, it's that's G-A- their relationship. G a l l a i n. So yeah, Ghislaine. Ghislaine. You know, Nick Cage just kind of came in and probably said something like Peter or something. He's just like, yeah. no, I am Ghislaine. I'm Ghislaine. <laughs> I'm Scottish. It's like, that's not Scottish. Okay, is it Scottish now? <laughs> eh, think like Mike Myers and Shrek. Oi! I got it! And they're like, <laughs> yeah, you nailed it, man. Go go for it. So, um, okay. So, anyway, fast forward three years later in the Far East this time. So, we go from the Middle East to the Far East. Well, that's China. Somewhere in Asia. China. The favorite of my Easts. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's um, China. And there's a king who's, like, dying on the throne, and he has a younger yes. son there and a daughter, and he tells the younger son, like, hey, you're going to be the next king, yes. and the younger kid's like, well, what about older brother whose name is Xing? Xing. Yeah. And he's like, no, Xing is a warrior, and uh, we don't want a warrior for this job. Yep. He's too violent. We need to bestow the throne to sweet, sweet Zhao. Who is the young Zhao. baby boy? Zhao. Z H A O. And the you sister can call is him li- Joey. Like Joe. No, Joe Zhao. works too. It's Zhao. It's Zhao. It's Zhao. And then and then the sister's name is Lion. L I A N. Lian. Lian. L I A N. Like Leah, but with an N. Lian. Leah. Leah N. Lian. <laughs> okay. All I okay. want to say about this part is that there's some really cool, like, secret safes and doors in this place. And it's, like, the 12th century. And there's yeah. still, like, it's, like, national treasury, I, I imagine. I don't <gasps> know national treasure. Oh, my God. I <laughs> just can't wait till we watch National Treasure. <laughs> Apparently, it's the best movie ever. It's the best um, movie. It's the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about this part. The, the, basically, Zhao and Lion have to run away. They get on a horse, and there's this old guy who's, like, escorting them. And this guy's a badass. He beats up, like, freaking 12 guards He's, who are trying to catch him. Yeah, yeah. Through That's martial it. arts. Now, here's the thing. There's So, yeah, there's guards that all have, like, knives and swords and, and spears. And this, like, old guy who's trying to protect the kids while the kids escape. So, like... The emperor gives his son, his little sweet sweet Zhao, the the seal that basically he's 14, says like by you the can way. be. Oh, he was like an eighteen year old, fourteen year old. Come on, man. <laughs> sure. Um, so he gives him a seal that says you can be the emperor, and he says run away before Xin comes, and he does. And then there's this yeah, there's this old man that does a martial arts fighting scene, which I I was in for. I thought this was gonna be a martial arts movie. It's not. That's the only martial arts you get in this entire film. So is it? Pretty yeah, much, I guess it is. Otherwise, it's just a sword and sandals drama thing. Kind of, it's like a sword sword movie. Okay, um, Sheen comes in. By the way, uh, everybody has an American. Like everybody speaks in English and has an American slash British e accent. Um, the Asian people just speak like American English. Yes. The, the, the white like people seem British. Slightly British. Slightly, like, slightly just no, in that, like... it has, like, an Asian twang to right. it. Well, Xing comes in. So Xing comes, like, right after they leave. And Xing is the older brother, and he's this general, and he's a warrior. And he's got, like, a Canadian accent. And you said that this was a Canadian-American and a uh, Chinese yeah. film. Yeah. He's Canadian. I'm, I'm going to put a stamp and say that that actor is probably Canadian because he sounded like either kind of California surfery, but like also just a little too nice. Like, like I deserve this kingdom. I fought for it. Don't you know? There ain't. <laughs> like, anyway. I, uh, um, I lied about this being our shortest episode if we're lingering this long on well, this scene. I just had the one line from him. So he kills his dad. There he, we go. There he kills his is. dad. And he Blames has a badass Zao. line when he kills Blames his dad. Zao. So yeah. I just want to say, heaven is closed for me because of the things I've done for you. And I was like, oh, that's good. That, that was good. You like that one? Yeah, I like that line. Heaven is closed for me. Because I think like the emperor says, like, may heaven have mercy on your soul. And he says, heaven is closed for me because of the things I've done for you. 
Oh, because he's a warrior and he's killed people, yeah. right? And right, he kills. Right. That okay. makes sense. So cut Cuts to, to a diner. Cut to Sh- uh, Zhao and Lian who are on the run, what? and they talk to each other like they're a frick, like they're video game characters. I put so everything that they say is like a video game cutscene. So when it's like Xiao talking to Lian, it's like little Xiao, little sweet sweet Xiao is like. I must save the kingdom, for it is my destiny. And I tell you what, the, the black god is against us, but we shall prevail because we have the destiny and the gods on our side. And then Leanne's like, Brother, do not say this, for we are destined to be on our destiny, and we must fight, and we must save the emperor, and we must be the king. And it's, it's just like, like an old Final Fantasy yeah, video like, game why, or something. Why, guys, it's just you two. You don't have right. to talk like this. In the diner, there's like this weird hooded guy, and he takes out like a black rock and he eats it. I didn't know what opium looked like. Well, you do. Did know. you know that's what it looked like? I figured because this was China, it was opium. Like it's yeah, but he's opium. sucking down opium, and like we go underneath the hood. The camera goes underneath the hood. Yeah. It's all blurry and stuff. He's high as shit. He's high as balls. Tripping and balls. Um, he has no money, no food. Oh, he has no money. So a guy comes over and is like, no money, no food, and gives him like bones. He's like, I thought you were the white ghost. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who this was. And we didn't know. We don't know whether it's Nick or Hayden yet. Or Hayden, right. But and it's basically, uh, Leanne goes in and asks for help, and the Black Guard come. And the Black Guard is the like army of Shing. And so they come in, and they're like, hey, guess what? We caught your brother. We're going to kill you. But at some point, they take... Uh, this hooded figure's sword, and then he's like, hey, "That's my sword." Well, and because he said to like leave him alone or something. Yeah, and then and he, he's they... like, "Give me my sword back," and they're like, "No, no, no!" And then he murders everybody. No, because... but did they did they knock him to the ground and then pee on him? Oh yeah, I do have that starred. They did do. They, pee is on that him. what they did? Yeah, they pee on him. They're they like clean this shower. mess up or whatever, and the guy yeah. just pees on him. They give him a golden shower to wake him up. To, because that kind of is like a trope through this movie too. Is that every time he gets a little too high, he like splashes water on his face to like get back into the zone. And so, yeah, getting getting peed on will get you into the zone. And, and then he has a bar so, fight and he kills a bunch of dudes. And because he's a really good knight, he's a good fighter. We've seen it in the Middle East. Um, and, by the um, way, it the, is uh, it is HC. It's our boy Jacob. Yeah, the last guy. Like that's still standing after Hayden beats up all these other people has like Zhao by the throat or something, and he's like, the 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 guy who's holding up Zhao goes, either way the boy dies, and Hayden goes, kill him then, I just want my sword back, and uh, I thought that was kind of a cool line, and then he spears the guy in the eye though, yeah. and uh, yeah he saves Zhao and like Lian. nails him to a post. Zhao is like okay, and then Zhao and Lian are like, hey you gotta help us, and he's like, no I don't. Can you can nah. you please call her Lion? Sure. Thank you. Little Joey. Happier. Sweet, sweet Joey and Lion um, are like, Joey you have to Lion. help us. And he's like, no, I, I don't. And then he takes off. And so they basically are like kind of going the same route. And I don't know. They get to a watering hole. Sure. And there's flashbacks. There is a flashback. of. Uh, I mar- hey, I have a HC. list of tropes now and I marked it off. Yeah. So HC has a flashback of Nick's face. I <laughs> said, um... When Nick, like, walks in on him in the room full of slaughtered women and children. And when he comes out of it, Joey and Lion are there. Yeah, Joey and Lion are around, and the black guard, like, catches up to them again. And then, like, he's like, okay, come on, you're you're with me now. And they're like, really? And he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. I don't care. Um, And they come up to a town that is flipping about it. Yeah. They come up to a town that has been burned down by the black guard, and there's one girl who's, like, trying to get away... But one of the black guard grabs her. So Zhao, Joey, grabs his bow, tries to shoot him, and just misses terribly. Like, the, the black guard doesn't even know he yeah, hit him. he's not good. Freaking Hayden grabs his bow. This guy is on a horse. He is traveling away from them. He is a good he's 200 yards away. He's going serpentine. He's not going in a straight line. <laughs> he is 200 yards away. And freaking Hayden lines it up, gets a perfect arc on that bow, hits the guy, kills him. Ooh. Girl's safe. Yep. Guy goes it down. Imp- horse goes down. And and Zhao even goes. Away. Then Zao they goes, catch up right away. Zhao goes, "How is that possible?" And I was like, "Thank you, Zhao." I was wondering that too. Yeah. And then he asked him later, like, "How did you do that?" And his his answer, "Did you get Practice. it? Practice. 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 Yeah. yeah that's all." Uh, we're treated to a cutscene later that basically shows that 
Nick is his mentor and like trained him to shoot bow and be a warrior. So yeah, it's Nick Cage, baby. Um, uh, they, Zhao and Lion convince Hayden to take this girl on as like their fourth person, and Hayden Christian could not be more pissed about this. I mean, she plays no role in the in the rest of the no. film. She plays one role. Like, I don't know if you caught this, but the romantic connections that they tried to make in this movie were very, like... Oh, between her and little Sweet Sweet Joey? Yeah. Okay. There's, like, one scene where they try to, like, show a little romance. It's just like, no. There's, like, a And the same thing happens with uh, Lion and and Hayden, too. It's just like, come on, man. This is forced. Yeah, there's, like, a meet cute while they're on horseback where, like, Sweet Sweet Joey is basically telling her, like, hey, I'm going to be emperor someday. And she's like... Yeah, doesn't fucking matter. Like my life's my life's <laughs> awful. Did you see my village back there? It's burnt. All my relatives my are family. dead. My life sucks, and you're trying to like get in these pants just because you're gonna be some big shot. I don't think so. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Um, but uh, but she's with them, and at one point, like she disappears, and I have no idea. I was I was just like, where where did she go? Oh, when they enter the in city. my notes, yeah, I was like, where did she go? And then she comes back later because she's wait, been was like she in the city. She's been chilling out on like a boat the whole time. I guess <laughs> I don't. Anyway, <laughs> with Nick Cage. Uh, so her um, name is Zhao Li. Doesn't matter. Oh, I did not catch it. Don't nope. need to. Don't need to bring it up. Down. She's there. But they, so they stop at a fire, and they're, like, camping for the night, and uh, Lion burns Hayden's opium. Yeah. And at this point, <laughs> like, Hayden takes off his shirt. I don't remember why. I think he's bathing the next morning. And dude has got an eight-pack. Well. It's not a six-pack. He's got an eight-pack. You could, you could iron your clothes on those abs, I just baby. have that it's, it's what, so what, it's 12th century, and she burns his opium, and he says, the appropriate response of, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I suppose. Like, I'll let it go. Why not? But, uh, yeah, Hayden gets his shirt off, and he's got the yeah. taco meat. He's got a little taco meat, but then he's got eight abs. He doesn't have the normal uh, six. He is ripped. Uh, HC has such a good look. So he's he's washing his he face. He does. He looks cool. And, yeah, I mean, he's got, like, the back tat of, like, this cross. Like, all yeah. the, like the huge cross on his back because he's a crusader. I mean, he's Christian. He's and, got, like, scars from his battles oof, and stuff. He's man. a man. Uh, he's Woo. tan. He's just, he's got, like, this, again. Wait, what's wrong with being not hair, tan? His hair what, is, like, be pink? shaved on the sides, but it's, like, a chunky mohawk, and it's also got, like, a line drawn. He just looks good, ladies and gentlemen. Are you throwing I'm, a jab at me for not being tan? Yeah. Pinky Pinky doesn't work, dude. Pinky doesn't fly. It's February. We got a, a foot and a half of snow. I was the only one, by the way, hiking this last weekend uh, with... Shorts on. Everybody else had like pants or sweatpants or. You know, I was the I, only one with shorts on, and everybody asked me on the trail, "Where Where are you from? Where are you from? You from? Are you from like Wisconsin or Minnesota?" And I was like, "Wisconsin." And they're like, "Yeah." Is that really what they I said? Tell. A couple people asked me straight up if I was from Wisconsin. Yeah. And then, okay. well, and I had a sweatshirt that did have Wisconsin, like a uh, Berlin, Wisconsin on it. Um, Here's my thing: my legs don't get cold. I no. like I I could wear shorts all year round it's and like shorts. Who, what, what what my calves are gonna get cold yeah. my calves don't get cold yeah it was shorts weather I it's mean, always shorts weather yeah it was fine I was fine I never got cold the entire time except okay. I did make this really sweet snowball like I was packing oh. the snowball it was beautiful the entire time and then we got to the Devil's Bridge and my anxiety was so high because everybody was just like slipping and sliding around me and these girls were screaming by the bridge again it's beautiful but. Just nerve wracking. So I had to. I had just toss my snowball. So our I've been snow this came. Whole time. Our snow came in two batches. We got some on Friday, some on Saturday. <sighs> I think Friday after the snow came, like on Saturday during the day before the next batch came, we were like, "Oh, hey, let's take Ranger out there. Like we'll go have some fun with Ranger." And I was all excited. I was gonna build a snowman, but the problem is, a few weeks ago we got like freezing rain. So while we have like. Three feet of snow in our front yard. There's only like eight inches, and then it's frozen ice. So I couldn't build a snowman, and it was too dry. But then Leah tried to take Ranger sledding, and it was so cute. But cute. Ranger loves the snow. He he goes in our backyard. He runs circles in the snow. Hey, he comes in. He's drenched because he's in snow. Snowman. He doesn't like sledding. Did you want to go and play? <laughs> so I built. A, I'm sorry uh, ins- that there's freezing rain. It's such a pain. <laughs> Let's talk about Nick Cage. I just want to say, instead of building a snowman, I built an open-faced igloo. 
because I obviously the snow was too loose. How is it <laughs> that, igloo? It's just like a wall of snow. It's an igloo. It's, it's a, a it's circle wall walls. of snow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eh, Ranger, sense. he ruined it. Seems legit. Ran right over it. Ugh. I'm still dog friendly. Yeah. Okay, guys, there's a scene where uh, uh, Zhao... So speaking of covered in three feet of snow, we go to the desert because that's Oh, in I was just going to say China. one quick thing. Joey decides to ask Hayden, like, hey, can you help oh, me yeah. train? And this so is where he helps him train. And in my head, I was just like, you know... This is really starting to remind me of Shanghai Noon when Owen Wilson mm-hmm. was trying to teach Jackie Chan. And I was just like, I wish this was Shanghai Noon. Yeah. Shanghai. I love Shanghai Noon. That's honestly one of my favorite comedies. I love Shanghai Noon. Yeah. Sorry. I, I was getting Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights mixed up. Shanghai Nights. No, not Shanghai Night Nights. To England or <laughs> no. Something. I like Shanghai no. Noon. Do you like Shanghai Noon? Yeah, Shanghai Noon's fine. Unamash? I think it's hilarious. Is that when that Unamash scene? Yeah. Where they're throwing yeah. the, like, the Chinese drinking game in the bathtub? Yeah. And then Owen Wilson scene. farts in it? Yeah, and they're like, Ucha, do, they do, they do, do, Unamash? Anyway. Um, uh, okay. So, yeah, speaking of the snow, we go to the desert. So now we're in the desert somehow. Um, we're on some sand dunes, and we meet up with this, like, Bedouin party uh, full of, like, this Whatever traveling caravan. Means. Bedouins. It's like a. Like I put it as a convoy. It's a convoy, people. It's a caravan. It's a caravan. Um, so they go into the caravan and... What What and, happened there? I don't get it. Hayden, like, well, paid Hayden, the, well, the Hayden, lady. Well, so sweet, sweet Joey and uh, Lion gave Hayden some gold. And then Hayden turned around and gave that gold to the lady to be like, Hey, get us into the city because that's, like, how thieves and, like people do it to like give them cover into the city so they're trying to get to this one city i didn't write it down it's a city um city full of like bad people jing tao and that's what it is at the entrance there's cool. like guards like checking and at one point they yep. say we're looking for the prince and princess and she the main lady goes well you're we're you're shit out of luck we don't have them yep Meanwhile, and she's like, nah, literally these right aren't there. the prince and princess that you're looking for. Kind of does like her Jedi again, a little bit of Jedi magic. Like, um, but like, really, it's just Lion, she pays off the guards to get in. That's Lion all. has a veil, yeah. oh, I guess, but she still, pays, if they're looking for the off. prince and princess. Yeah, know, Lion had a not. veil. Little Joey, he you can see him right there. He's trying to hide behind a horse a little bit. He's not doing a good job for a sweet, little. Sweet is. Joey has like the most <laughs> angelic little face. He's a sweet boy. He's a sweet he looks little like, boy. He looks he, like Jaden Smith. He talks like a little... What? Jaden Smith is black. So? he What? Do you know who Jaden Smith is? Yes. And there were times where I thought he looked like Jaden Smith. Okay. I guess. I'll let it go. Look. Like Nick Cage doesn't see gender. Jaden Smith. I, I didn't see, like, the, like, they look similar enough there that, like, whatever. I knew they were different races. It doesn't matter. Okay. How do you know that little Joey isn't, like, a half black, half Asian? You know? I, he might be. Yeah. We never see his mom. It's true. I'm saying in real life. I, okay. I'm talking about the actor looking like Jaden Smith. <laughs> Guys, we'll put another poll up. Nobody will look at it, but we'll show you if this actor looks like Jaden Smith because I'm going to call BS, but Brian can live inside that fantasy. Okay. Well, let's they get, get in. They start eating and drinking. Village because we got some tropes coming up, everybody. Well, one thing I want to talk about is this is one part where uh, Joey and that other girl, what's her name? Lion? Or Jowie? No, no, no. Jowie? Whatever. Zhao the, the, the villager. Zowie? Zhao Li. Zhao Li. And uh, they're all eating dinner, and uh, Joey's just looking at her, and she just goes, what are you looking at? Like, they're trying to build a little romantic tension there, and I'm just like, Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't work. But again, like she's in and out of this movie so many times that like you, she's forgettable. She's forgettable. But you do see that like uh, Lion is starting to get a little, she's starting to catch some feels for old uh, well, Hayden Christensen because he keeps taking his shirt off and going for a bath. But like earlier, she was trying to get on a horse and like she oh, couldn't. Yeah. She like fell off, so oh, like yeah. Hayden caught her and she just kind of gave him like love yeah. eyes, like oh, you caught me. Um, but they're all eating dinner, and eventually the, the girl who, like, got them into the city says, like, hey, why don't you guys all go to bed? Me and Hayden, like, I have something special for him. And out comes, like, four she, other girls yeah. who start massaging him. She's and getting him wasted. 
Yeah, and she pours him another drink, and um, she can sense that he's like a, a drunkard, and and Hayden does like to do opium because he says it like dulls his senses, dulls the memories, and and he's trying to run from something. Uh, Leanne Lion sees through this and says like, no, 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 I want you sharp. But apparently, this like Bedouin woman is just like, nah, let's let's get him effed up. Yeah, excuse me, Hayden. Pardon. He starts. He starts convulsing, and uh, then Shing arrives, or his men arrive, I guess, rather. Um, Hayden wakes up after, like, convulsing and passing out, and he's tied up. There's a guard in there. Yeah, so... Why did he not attack him earlier? So, yeah, exactly. That was exactly my question of, like, what the... So the as hell? soon as Hayden he waits wakes up, until the guard he wakes him. up to try and kill him, like literally, and like Hayden just like wakes up and is like, uh, "Okay, I'll, I'll I'll kill you," but the guard like <laughs> looks at him and is like, "Oh, you were you were actually gonna be awake? Like, I've been sent here to kill you slash guard." This you. happens so many times. Wait in this for movie. you to wake up so that I can like come at you with a knife and let you kill me instead. But he he burns. Yeah, he burns the he he kills the guy or knocks him out or something. Burns the ropes that he was tied with. Then he runs into the convoy lady. Yeah, and he just he okay. he high so fucking she says something. Her. She says something like, um, "Hey, listen, I'm gonna turn these dudes." In. So the whole point was that she got paid off so that she could like protect them. But then she double crossed them and sold them out to basically say like, "Hey, I alerted the black guard that you guys are here." Like. They're not after you. They're just after the little prince and princess. So, like, you and me will split the winnings, and, like, I'll be your mistress. And? And he high fucking yas her. He gives her a one, one punch, punch knockout. Knocks her out. Which you know what? ticks I off our box of one punch knockout and a high F and yah. And Beating up a woman. He punches a woman. But he drops Rock, the this line. This happens so much he drops the in line the cage films. And says, I already have a mistress. And I'm just like... Yeah. Is it Lion? I, maybe, sure. But it's just great. I was just like, I already have a mistress. After but he knocks her out cold. How? Brock. Why? They, they don't hit. There's not this many times. Like you, I don't, What other actor can you watch their movies and get this many times where a man beats up a woman? Uh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery loves to hit a woman. Sean Connery loves hitting women. Okay, but after he knocks her out, uh, he tells Zhao and Lion and the other girl, hey, there's some boats. Go on the boats and head east to the to mountains. To the Silver Mountain. There are 20 or so black guards in yep. freaking Hayden Christensen because the black guards only come in one or two. Shoop, shoop it, they, they follow the video. This is like a video game. I mean, the, the <laughs> characters is. cut. They talk like there's a video game. The guard waits until you wake up. And then when you're going to face all the guards, they wait and they attack you in ones and twos. Did we just, like, is this a video game movie we just didn't realize Maybe it, it? is. Maybe it uh, is. I guess. But yeah, so they come at him in ones and twos, and he's able to get out of 20 people to a boat, but he's pretty messed up. Yeah. Because now there's another 20 or so. So Lion and Zhao are in a boat. They're heading. Wait a minute, They're though. paddling. Is this the part where, like, he technically does get, like, somewhat captured and then the dude drives the sword into his chest? No. I have Is no trick down for that. Yeah, that's that's the last scene. Don't worry, I have... That's that's but, actually Nick Cage, by the way. No, 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 no. He gets, like, cut open a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, that's the last scene. No, that's like before, because then oh, no, he's sick is... by the time he gets to the mountain. That's right. He's that is sick because it gets, like, infected. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, so while they go off, he is behind, and he gets, like, somewhat captured, and they, like, have a sword, and they basically, like, put it to his chest and, like, cut it open, like, an inch. And just, like, like an inch-long scar, but, like, it must get infected, and he must get, like, sick from it. It was, like, two, three inches. But then it was a big he, scar. And it was he, right on his heart, man, right on yeah, his chest. He, like, somehow gets out of it and beats everybody because else up. And there's 20 guys. How does he get out of it? He's a badass. Uh, All right. I forget, because he's got God on his side, man, because it's a video I game. Guess. So now, after he gets in the boat and starts rowing, like, he is really weak, though. It cuts back to Lion and Zhao, who just land, but the other, the bad guys are there. The black guards are there. Tail. And they're running through the woods. Oh, yeah, Just like right. in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Excuse, they're all running through excuse, the woods. Excuse. And uh, all suddenly, there's arrows coming yeah. and killing the black guards. And dude's, like, jumping out of the trees at him. 
And uh, we've been told that if they go to the Silver Mountain, that it's full of bandits, and bandits hate black guards. Yep, and uh, including so the white ghost. Then it cuts to Hayden, kind of barely getting to shore. He like passes out. Mm-hmm. Um, when he wakes up, we kind of start getting blurry vision, and oh, uh, yeah. we start seeing Nick Cage. Basically, anytime it goes into like Hayden's eyes, it's blurry vision. Dude has some jacked up conjunctivitis happening. Like, dude's and, uh, got cataracts. He needs to be smoking weed. He doesn't need to be doing opium. He needs to be, like, puffing on that that good good. I did write down, uh, this is this is really our Nick Tro, if I'm being honest. And we're an hour into this movie at this point, people. Give so, it your best, because you better freaking nail this line or else I'm coming at you. I, I wrote down extra H's where I needed to <laughs> emphasize. I'll, I'll try it and then you can try it. Uh, so Hayden Christensen kind of wakes up and he moans a little bit. Nick Cage goes, Hurts? Good. If it was my choice, I would have let, let you rot. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I, that's good. Yeah. 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 And then? I, said, I added an extra H. I, I spelled hurt. And H-U-H-R-T. then? H-U-H-R-T. Yeah. Hurts. Well, I'll let you, let you so rot. Then are you, are you asking talking me about the next mean? line. Can I do the next oh, line? Sure. <clears throat> I'll be Hayden. Black, My companions? Uh, black gods are as thick as flies out of farting god's ass because of you. You brought them here. No? Not good enough? I don't know. It's well, been a while fine. since I saw it. But yes, he, black he's... guards are as thick as flies on a farting goat's ass because of you. You brought them yeah. here. Yep. And I'm like, um, it, it could have just been a regular goat's ass. It, uh, farting goat's ass, great. Adds a little color. That's, that's, that's pure Nick, Nick punch up for you. That's it's a Nick Cage punch up going off page. The said black guards are as thick as flies on a goat's ass, and Nick Cage added farting. Obviously, you know he did. Yeah. Um. And guys, we finally like. But that accent is Nick, all over the place. Yeah, we see Nick Cage again, and one of his eyes has like a a, a sword mark over it, and it's closed. He can't open it. It's damaged. Yeah. He has got snakes. Wrapped around both yeah. hands. Yeah. Oh, that's the best part. He's got and at snake. one point, at one point, he has an itch on his chin, and he itches yep. it with the snake on his wrist. I got a snake, man. <laughs> <laughs> it just reminded me of, like, he's got two snakes. He got, I got a snake, man. <laughs> what? And they're, yeah, they're just wrapped around his hands. That's the only time yeah. we see these snakes, but it's really weird. I thought he used the one snake. Yeah, it was like an itch, but I thought it was just like either like like. Like using it like a razor, almost <laughs> like uh, uh, like a Flintstones character. With so we, with yeah, their no, I know what you're saying. Yeah, animals. like he's got to shave it with yeah. the scales. Mm-hmm. We get a little bit of emasculating here because Nick goes to Zhao and Zhao says something like, um, "I need to protect my kingdom" or something. And and Nick goes, "How old are you? Ten? <laughs> so he's kind of emasculating him. And, well, he yeah. says, "How old are you? Ten? And then Zhao says. Fourteen, and he goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's you're right. I did laugh a little early because he does say, "How old are you?" Ten, and then when he says fourteen, he laughs. But I, but yeah, he's but I, him I a little bit. with Nick Cage because I was like, "See, ages are hard, man. It's, <laughs> it's not easy. Kids are kids." Yeah, but you don't need to laugh in his face after he tells you. Uh, but so he's got a squinty eye. He's got a scar. He's got this top knot, which. Again, it's like this like ponytail coming off the, the top and long hair and the widow peak. He's still got the widow peak. The and widow's peak is v, insane. But it's got to be a wig, right? Well, it has to be. He doesn't right? have that long. Well, like, he does think have about the long movies hair. around this because we've seen a 2014 and he didn't have that. He had long hair. I. I can't. Uh, I cannot believe that that is his real hair, especially like, why because they put it did extensions not look in like real hair. Why could the they put time. extensions in just for the ponytail? Ah, oh, I don't think it was though. I think that was a wig. All right, hold on. I have her list pulled up. Let me see what other movie was from. left behind. It was twenty fourteen. That's your <laughs> and his hair looked Nick. good. I thought <laughs> no, his hair was on fleek. He had no, like the not. sideburns. He had yeah, it looked and good. dying of the light. Oh my god, his 2014 was a terrible year for 2014 was rough. Left behind, dying of the light, and this. Oh, so that's a wig. Um, that is a wig. So we get another little bit of romantic chemistry well, here. Where they're trying to like have, build up. 
I have uh, where Zhao says like, "You're the Atla." Again, like very, very video gamey. Like, you're the Atla they call the White Ghost. And then he says, "I am the White Ghost, but nobody calls me Atla, child, not to my face." And it's just like, okay, well, yeah, everybody calls you behind your back, though. So now they're trying to build more romantic chemistry. Lion goes in by Hayden Christensen, gets a rag of warm water and like pats his head. And Hayden's like, you don't have, you don't have to do that. And uh, she's like, I want to do that. So again, just, just my note. I noticed there's like three scenes where they try to build this romantic chemistry and there is no romantic chemistry between them. Hayden's very hard to have romantic chemistry with because... Like, he's got to keep himself open so that the audience wants to, to F him like me. So, Nick Cage has a mistress. And um, Hayden and Nick... Nick Cage has a wife. Don't call her a mistress. Don't sell it short. He calls her a mistress. He calls her his wife the entire movie. Oh, actually, movie. okay. Hayden kept saying mistress. And he You're calls right. Nick her Cage should say woman. Wife. The entire yeah, movie we'll get too. there. We'll get there. Um, but, um, but after Haynes like healed up, him and Nick Cage start talking again. And again, here's Nick Cage mumbling because mm. I couldn't. I had to turn on the subtitles. Mm. I know well, you had the Nick subtitles Cage on. I had to turn him, it back on. Here's your fucking opium. And there's his fuck. So we got that one out of the way. And uh, as he's mumbling, he talks about how his wife used to be a beautiful singer, and someone <laughs> cut out his tongue. So you know, like the gods suck. And then at the end of it, he just goes. I have to take a piss. Oh, well, he says, but I still have hair, and it's all that really matters. I have to take a piss. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> out of nowhere. But when he says, I still have hair, it's like, I still have hair. And I thought he was saying, I still have hair. And I was like, yeah, you do still have hair. <laughs> you got a little bit there. Dude, do we ever see his taco meat? I don't think we do. Uh, we get a lot one, of no, hate in taco meat. I think he's like all covered up the entire... Because, again, he's only in this movie like 15 minutes. Dude, <laughs> right? There must have been a scene where they did a close-up of his face. <laughs> and this is where I put I put wig or not. That widow's peak is on fleek. Uh, yeah, the widow's peak is real tight. It's real tight. Um, <laughs> all right. Shing's men so, yeah, start so making their it, way Anyway, the it mountain. flashes back, though, to Nick witnessing H.C. killing the women and children again, like a bunch of Padawans, because I actually didn't get it the first time. I didn't realize that, like, they'd seen it the first time. I thought this was the first flashback, and I was like, yeah, looks kind of reminiscent of, like, you know, when he was, Annie, no! Um, but he explains, no, 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 I didn't do that shit. Like, the wife, the mom, like, killed all the kids. And then slit her own throat before I even got there. Now, yeah. Nick has spent the last three years thinking that Hayden just went in and slaughtered them all. And that's why they haven't talked in three years. And, like, they're not buddies anymore. They couldn't have, like, cleared that up right right on the spot or in the last three years. Like, they had to wait until this moment to they clear that up. They were in the middle up. of raiding a town, dude. I, you could have just been like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-uh. It's not what it looks like. I know what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. <laughs> But but like come there on, there was already some weird. There were some weird things already going I, on between Nick and yeah, Hayden. Yeah, but I'm gonna believe anything that Hayden tells me. If he tells me, all he's gotta do kill, is flash that smile. Oh, he's just gotta he like looks, comb his hand through that hair. He looks so good. Oh, he's what so, happened? He's like gorgeous. He was not this good looking in Star Wars. N- no, he's older now. He he's had more that mature. Stupid little rat tail. <laughs> he looks really good, guys. He is hot. Ladies, check it out. Guys, give Hayden Christensen another chance. He won't uh, let you okay. down. So now Shing's men are making their way up the mountain, and Nick Cage and all his oh, people Oh, yeah, start... Shing's doing some stuff in the background, too. Like, he's Nick... preparing, and, like, he, he has, like, the, the loyalty, quote-unquote, of the general that, like, was technically loyal to his dad. So, like, doesn't really like Shing, but, like, has to follow him because Shing's basically like, if you don't, I will kill your family. Um, and then, so, yeah, so Shing's got the whole army following after, and the Black Guard following after uh, Hayden and the kids. Sorry. And they're building bombs. They're getting bombs ready. They're shooting arrows at them. And uh, they they retreat to a cave after a bit. Like, they, they kind of blow up some people. They shoot some people. They retreat to a cave. And once they're in the cave, there's this sweet-ass, like... The, 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 like a spiky board oh, that comes yeah. down and like stabs like, like three of the black guards. That was log. cool. Like Home Alone style. It was style. cool. 
Yeah, big. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I thought. Yeah, big spikes on it. And or it actually, off. like Star Wars, that happens in Star Wars. Does it? Yes. There. Well, there's a swinging log bit in Star Wars. Guys, quit ripping off Star Wars, outlaw. <laughs> Come on, Shing. Be your Shing own movie. Is like, Shing is really encroaching now. So, uh, like. Hayden tells Zhao and Lion, like, you guys have to retreat, whatever. And Nick Cage kind of runs out there and is starting to oh, yeah. beat him up this a little bit. This show is Nick's range because he's got one eye closed the entire time, by the way. His yeah. eye never comes back open, so he is method for that. His wife, like, throws a bomb just as Nick runs Ooh. out there. Yeah. And she sees that, like, holy shit, I'm going to kill Nick right now. So she runs out there, Ooh, to which gets in front of Nick, protects no. Nick. <laughs> Don't do she that. protects Nick. She dies. She gets blown Nick up. lives. So there's this other character. So, like, Nick's got, like, a band of thieves and, like, bandits and stuff. And there's this big, fat blacksmith. I was really sad that he died. Like, at one point, like, he gets shot through with, like, ten arrows. Because if you're a big, fat dude in the middle of a battle and you're on the good side, like, you're always going to just get lit up by arrows and have to, like, go berserker and keep going. So I know that as a, a, a not so big, fat dude, but if I was in a battle... I'd get lit up by arrows, and I'd have to just keep going. So sure, I felt people targeted you in Blood Ball. Yeah, I, I felt, but I was a I was an assassin in Blood Ball. You know what I love about being tiny is people underestimate me. Oh, absolutely. I'm five eight. You know, my bot, my build doesn't look that big, but when I played kickball, they they would all all the outfielders would move up in the in the field. Yeah, right? but I'm a big cross country mistake. Runner. I got these big thighs. Big I would mistake. boot that ball over their heads. Next time, they're all back. I still get home runs. I don't still care. Still get home runs. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you got uh, a deep okay. thigh bruise. You're getting that home run. I did get a home run in, with a deep thigh bruise in gym. Yes. I did. Yeah, it was a legendary moment, everybody. <laughs> I think I, 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 think I pitched that, that home run <laughs> against you. That was like because I, 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 and like I someone I threw had, it at me and I just I had juked no it. confidence that your deep thigh bruise because the homeboy couldn't walk. <laughs> like Brian could barely walk with this deep thigh bruise. He'd been limping all week and whining about this deep thigh bruise and his leg was straight. Run the mile. I and was he's upset. like yeah he's like limping along with his straight leg and he gets out to plate and I'm like okay guys like we don't have to worry. Brian can't kick he can barely stand and he boots a home run. <laughs> Like a yeah. real jerk. I, what the hell was our gym teacher doing? Let me even play. Uh, like, I think I just told her I wanted to, and she's like, "All right, you can try if you want." And I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." Yeah. Uh, what What are they gonna do? They don't get paid yeah, enough to care. All right, guys. So remember, Nick Cage's uh, wife just died. Yeah. Their, uh, Shin's men are encroaching. Nick says, "Hayden, you gotta fall back." Nick Cage has an arrow in his leg. He pulls it out and yells, "You want my blood? You want my blood?" Yeah. So. There we get the repeating. Yeah. Y'all repeat. He pulls an arrow out of his leg like his freaking Ace Ventura. (laughs) 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 Yeah. It's in the bone. It's in the bone. (laughs) So, yeah. And then you... You want my blood? You want my blood? And they do. They do want his blood. And there are... 40 or so black guards at this point. Yeah, they're, they're they just keep coming, man. They're making these guys like in, so, the, in the background. You got, you got 40 black guards. You got one Nick Cage. What's the best way to attack that, that one Nick Cage? Uh, one by one? One Probably like maybe two by one. <laughs> they if do you that can, a if you can afford them. Um, Nick Cage at one but point. Yeah, so, yeah, they, he, takes they out, like, he takes out another 10 guys. He does. And at one point, he punched a guy who had a helmet on. <laughs> still knocked him out. Yeah. He's got okay, he's got that berserker here, rage. Here is where I wrote down some notes, dude, because Nick Cage is getting beat the fuck up. They're, like I said, there's 40 guys, and they're Language. coming one by one, two by two. He holds his own for a bit, mm-hmm. but it, it becomes too much. Nick Cage yeah. got sliced five times. So the sword hit him, sliced five times. He got stabbed. Seven times, he and uh he did end up getting a spear in him, and he used the freaking spear to like knock over even more guys. Yeah. So Nick Cage gets his moment to shine, dude. Yeah, you're gonna die after seven stabs and five slices. But you know what we're waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. We want Nick he Cage did. to die. He did it, and he died finally. He does it. He does it 
because this is a Nick Cage movie, and, you know, we're on a roll here. This is our 11th, and I would say 8 out of the 11, he has died. So he dies. And, uh... Here's that line that you like. You know that there's like time? a rule with uh, like Denzel Washington movies where like he will never die in a movie. Like really? the only movie that he dies in, spoiler alert, is um, one in which he plays like a bad, irredeemable character. Otherwise, like Denzel never dies. Nick always dies. <laughs> what is like uh, Denzel write it in his training day? Like he does dies he write in his contract that he ha- he can't die. I think he like negotiates in the films that like. Like, he, unless his character is, like, an irredeemable asshole, like, he does not get to die. Okay. Nick Cage, as he's dying, has one final dying yeah. words, and he says... I see. And, and the accent is gone at this point. He does not have an accent. He goes, I see you, woman. I see you. And we, I think, does it, like, show, like, his wife a little bit? Yeah, I think so. I don't so. know. Um, but he doesn't even call her by her name. He's just like, I see yeah. you. So his wife's woman. name is May. Like, we learned that her name is May. <laughs> Did we? Yeah, or Mai. Like, M-E-I. Um, or, like, at one point, like, I don't know. She does something, and, like, the subtitles maybe told me that her name was May or Mai. And, uh, but, yeah, he calls her woman this entire film. Like, at one point, too, like, she, she looks at him. Oh, it's, uh, by the way, she can't talk. They cut out her tongue. She had her tongue cut out. I told you that. Okay. Um... But at one point, like, she gives him a look, and he says something like, Get off my case, woman. You're always talking. Like, you're always, like, <laughs> telling me what I should do. And I, I can't even hate- get the accent right, because, like, I think I could try for a Scottish accent, but I don't know if I can nail Nick's Scottish accent. So I'm going, like, weird, like, Jamaican, Caribbean, pirate. Hayden Christensen, Zhao, Lion, they all come back out. And I actually thought this was kind of a funny part. Uh, Shing, like, is calling him out, like, <laughs> Lion, Zhao. And then he goes, and white monkey. Yeah, and I was like, oh, he doesn't want to be a white monkey. He could be the white ghost. He could be, like, the white yeah. like the white spirit. I, I thought it was a good little jab. Huh. The white monkey. Yeah, I mean, so Brock, what has again, he done to this point to be a monkey? Nothing. That's just funny. But again, Brock, you have the guy that you want to kill. Mm-hmm. You have all your black guards mm-hmm. around you. He doesn't. Even, I don't even think he's armed at this point. Do you kill him? No. No. You gotta wait for Hayden to like get his sword out, and then you start attacking. You challenge him. him to a duel. Well, he challenges him to a duel. And Hayden. Yeah. I, I wrote Shing, down the stats for this too. Shing and Shing Hayden beats the shit out of him. Shing and Hayden go like mano, a mano, mano, a mano. Anyway. For a while. At the end, some but, black arts are shooting arrows Shing, at him. Shing was shown training earlier. Shing likes to fight with two swords. Yeah. Do you know who else used to fight with two swords? Anakin. A certain Darth Maul. When, oh, Darth Maul. When he was fighting against Anakin and the Jedi. Get your own Anakin damn movie Christmas. out, Cass! What are you doing? Quit ripping <laughs> shit off! Hayden Christensen gets four slices... One really hard kick to the head and two arrows in him still kills Shing. Well, okay. So, Shing, like, stabs Lion. Stabs and Lion. that's what makes Hayden, like, even with yeah. these two arrows, he's just like, not my woman. Well, well so, the thing is, yeah, like, like uh, Hayden is fighting Shing, and at one point, he's, like, gonna get the upper hand, and then... An archer shoots an arrow into him, which is not into his leg. Cool. It's not cool though. Like this is actually where I wrote down my Ace Ventura line yeah. because it went right into his leg. Yeah, like that's not cool. And the guard who is loyal to the dad but is now loyal to Shing, well, is like following Shing. He looks around. He's like, "Yo, not cool. Anybody else who fires an arrow is gonna die. Like you let yep. these two fight man to man." Like, they wanted to quit cheating. This bullcrap. So, yep. so they um, get to. So, yeah. Shing, like, stabs Lion. So, that's what gets Hayden, like, rejuvenated after mm-hmm. all those things I told you mm-hmm. that happened to him. He should be dead. But he's like, not my Lion. And he kills Shing. Of love. And uh, Lion and, and Hayden the are kind of, like, holding hands as the end scene. And just kind of like, we're going to make it, baby. Oh, yeah. They're that's like, what they say. We're going to make it, they're baby. They're both like... Could die. I mean, we don't know because they're both no, they pretty live. effed up. They could die is what I'm saying. Oh, but then, yeah, like, right It's now. like fade out, fade yeah. back in. And the thing is, again, 
I don't know how Hayden operates because anytime it goes back into like his vision, which it does often, it's hazy and like super distorted and fuzzy. And so like dude's high or on opium or just has cataracts the entire movie. So I don't know how he yep. fights because he can't see. Yeah, that's what it I don't get. It goes based on instinct. And at one point, like Lion even said to him, like, "Yeah, you need to be uh, like on your sharp senses." And opium like dulls your senses. Yeah. And I'm like, "Holy shit!" If this is Hayden with dull senses, yeah. what he's like, he's like, well, he, why can't God, I think of his name? God like guides his hand. He's like, oh my God, this is really bad. You can't think of what's what is who does Anakin turn into? Darth Vader. Darth Vader. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, that was bad. He's like Darth all Vader. Right. Anyway, um, guys, they all live well, happily I was gonna ever say, after. We all die so dead. romantic, and then right underneath that, I have oh J.K. Because then, yeah, it fades back in and, like... Uh, and it's done. And My goodness. Nope, that freaking hair, though. Because he gets on a horse and he rides away. But that hair, it's just one more shot of, like, <laughs> perfection. What uh, is your Pete Cage? Like, there's only one scene to pick, I feel like. I, I mean, the you want my blood, you want my blood berserker scene. You want my blood? You want my blood? Oh, that's yours? That's mine. You well, want mine my blood, is... you want my blood, and then he goes berserker and dies. Like, his death scene is the is a cagiest scene. I guess. My my favorite Nick Cage scene is where he goes, Black guards are as thick as flies on a farting goat's ass because of you. If it was my choice, I would have let you rot. <sighs> oh, God. My companion safe. Black guards are as thick as flies on a farting goat's ass because of you. Yep, yep, yep. That's my yep. that's my PK. Yep. I mean, uh, I can pick whatatever the frick I want. No, dude. I know that's actually a better like for Nick Cage too. I know it is. That's what I like. That was the one scene where I just heard it. And I was Fuck like, it. oh, that was my Nick favorite Cage. scene. But my peak cage is then the, how old are you? Or, <clears throat> how old are you? Ten? Fourteen? <laughs> if we escape my brother, I will be the king. How old are you? Ten? Fourteen! <laughs> and it's like... That's... So, so that's your real peak cage? That's my or real peak cage? cage. Was the maniacal laugh at... The little boy being 14. So, our tropes. Oh, he's also wearing a Mongol hat the entire movie. We didn't mention that. But, like, you can barely see the top knot sometimes, too, because he's wearing, like, this Mongolian, like, hat. Yeah. He loves hats. He loves different hats. Okay, so a lot of these tropes, Um, Hayden Christensen actually did them. Taco meat. Hayden Christensen did it. Drugs. So I'm like I said, oh. I don't think it can just be raw dog and pills. I think it has to be drugs. Drugs. Too. Yeah, yeah. Go for drug it. use. There's that. I don't think uh, Nick got... did any drug use, but sure. But Hayden, Hayden did. It's his Hayden's movie, guys. Nick's in it. But... Yeah, Nick Cage is in it. For Hayden 10 did the one punch. Maybe. Hayden punched a woman. <laughs> but Nick, Nick Cage, Cage said, "Fuck you." Say... He didn't say "fuck you." He said, "Here's your he said, Fuck. fucking opium." Yeah. We have flashbacks, we have mumbling, we have yelling and repeating, we have laughing, we have abuse of women and, chil- women and children. Which, oh, the thing is... I don't think Nick actually does. No, but he did call... He didn't call anybody the the opposite sex, and he didn't, like, emasculate anybody, but he did belittle the child. Right? He was kind of emasculating him a little bit. Eh, yeah. Um, he, he did not really make fun of someone to their face. He did he not have a hand the, I'm surprised he didn't call sweet, sweet Jow, like... Uh, a girl. Little girl? Yeah. <laughs> How old are you, little girl? Ten? Yeah, so the thing is, like, Leanne is, I don't know, 18 to 20-ish. And, like, the fact that she's trying to hook up with Jacob, they they do kiss at some point. There is, like, a kissing scene. Um, and there's, like, some sort of, again, like, a love plot line between them. But then he just rides away at the end. Um... You know, I'm trying to think, so we gotta give our score. <sighs> oh, oh, was there more tropes? No. No hand wiggle, There's no, no like, making real, like, fun of someone hand wiggle face. from Nick Cage. Uh, I mean, I, unless you count the snake, but that's not a hand wiggle. That's just, yeah. just 
He's got a snake, man. Um, and then he dies because I... he does. So for our scores, is he a good actor? Was... Okay, so this was the chance to show Nick's range. He got to have an eye closed the whole time, and he got to do some accent work. Would you say <laughs> that no. because of this he was a good actor? No. No. He's terrible. He is so bad. Just like I said in that one no. review where the guy's like, um, you know, like, this is the turning point into sad Nick Cage. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this he sucks. You guys. Hayden Christensen this, far out acted This him. wasn't a good movie, and... Ultimately, like it wasn't a good movie. It's just kind of a waste of time. Um, what What are you gonna rate this one on IMDb? I'm, I'm probably gonna give it a three though, because like the thing is like it. What... See, I was gonna give it a four, and it's like because I might give this it, one a four only because it didn't piss me off as much as the other movies have. That's what I'm trying to think of. Like, like I'm sitting here. It's along the lines of Ghost Rider, where like it was fine. It did like its job. It was a movie. Yeah, I didn't hate it. I didn't actively despise it, and there it was boring. But but there's nothing to make you want to watch it again. No, and Hayden Christensen, except for Hayden, is just he 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 did fine in acting. I think he did. fine. I'm not talking about his acting. And like the action was was fine. I would have liked a little more martial arts, but I got what I came for. Were, you were excited for this movie. Did it live up to your expectations? No, but like I was excited because I. What What did you expect? I, what were your expectations? I thought it was gonna be kind of more of like a martial artsy, um, oh. like crushing tiger, hidden dragony kind of thing, or even like a last samurai kind of movie, like where Hayden like infiltrates China and then like is like the Great White Hope, which is super problematic, but. I expected something a little b- better than that. And in, in a sense, like, it is. It's just... It's a very small scale for, like, how this movie went from the Middle East to it, China to, like, hey, we gotta save this empire. It's like, okay, two days and it saved. It had a it saved. $25 million budget. And I'm guessing that it made two. Uh, it made, like, three. It wasn't released in the U.S. It made, like, three million in mm. uh, China. Mm. But so am I? Am I more lenient to movies than you are? I feel like every time we talk about our ratings, I'm always one point ahead of you, or two I, in some cases. Like I, I feel like you're more critical than I am. Where like I can kind of just be like, you know, like it sucked, but it's like it's not that bad. I so all of these movies are fours and fives, and all like all of his movies are fours to sixes. It seems, and I just like I don't <laughs> these movies. I I don't I don't like in, I, I don't know I don't enjoy them, but I don't disenjoy them. So Brock, I'll give it a four. Brock has I'll give it a Brock four. has his hands on his head. He looks very frustrated so, right now. Very I'm flustered. so flustered, but I just you, I wish I could give a, a film a zero because I would give Doggy Dog that zero, like it deserves. You know. You listen to a podcast called The Worst Idea of All Time, where mm-hmm. they watch one movie once a week for a whole year. Yes. It kind of feels like we're like in that same boat right now, just with how shitty these movies have been. We So, looking forward to the future, it is just... Uh, we have a, lo- a tall task ahead of us. We have a lot more movies to watch. And we don't have to watch the same movie over and over again. Like We get to kind of like cleanse our palate and... And and <sighs> wash our slate clean and start with the next one. But like we have a ton of films to watch. Speaking of films to watch, our next one is called Looking Glass. Looking Glass. So it was released on February sixteenth of twenty eighteen, a week ago. Yeah, but but you're claiming we can get it for free somewhere. I, so. I saw it come up and I read a review and it was like, you know what, this movie sucks. <laughs> donkey dong but you can watch it for free and one movie said i think the plot line was or i thought i think the like review tagline was just what and then the the review said like this movie has no plot and is one big plot hole and i think they just put out an incomplete movie and i don't know what i just watched and then the other uh review which i think was only like four or five stars was like you know what uh, it's a movie and it's free, so why not? And I was like, oh well, if it's free, 
we I, may as well watch yeah, it. Yeah, we'll we'll look into it. We'll look into it. But um, so this movie, Outcast, was a four point six. The reason we decided to throw Looking Glass in there is because it's also a four point six on IMDb right now. It's a four point six, but it just came out, so it might be tanking. Yeah. So we. We were supposed to watch Firebirds, which is a 4.7. <gasps> oh, so is that going to be the next one? <laughs> so the fact that we're... Yeah, dude, I was looking at his list. I didn't actually list. know which one the next one was, because I was like just Our, trying to look through some movies to see which ones were going to come up. Of his bottom 31 movies, six, only six of them are from the 90s. Like, mm. all of his shitty movies are released in the 2000s and on. Yeah, well, uh, I got like some coworkers. Shout out to... Uh, Old DB himself, he's really excited for next and knowing, which I believe are like back to back on our rankings yeah. list. But he says that those aren't that bad, and those were like two thousands films. So one thing I want to say about Looking Glass is I looked it up before the podcast just because you said you wanted to do it. It has thirteen directors. Is that Whoa, normal? Or producers maybe Wait. thirteen producers. Producers, but yes. That's still directors, no. You should not producers. have 13 directors. How could there be 13 producers? Producers are like people with like a vested interest in the movie. Executive producers are the people that pay for it. But yeah, but producers are basically like people who have some sort of influence and say like, well, I want there to be, you know, uh, more women in this movie or I want there to be like some sort of love story in this movie or, or whatever. They have usually input from the studio so it could have like switched studios as like studios buy different rights to the movie and whatnot um it does sound like this movie sat in production hell and they probably released it while it was incomplete so this three-star reviewer so getting... may have had some like <laughs> some you know inside knowledge or, or something like that of what what was happening here or at least a good idea of what was happening here we may have and... an incomplete movie on our hands I just barely read like anything about it, but apparently it's something they lost their kid or something. Nick and his wife, and, and they rent a they go to a hotel cabin or in the woods or like a yeah. cabin in like isolated spot, and like it, crazy. It's a stuff thriller. Starts happening. I don't know. We'll see. It's gonna be right. garbage, dog crap. You want? Do you want to tell people about us, uh, guys? If you really again, nerds, come at me. I talk to me about the prequels. I don't care. But uh, tell me what you think, and then we'll put up some post about Jaden Smith and Sweet Sweet Zhao. Yeah, so that you dude, can tell me that they're identical similar. twins. Um, and you can do that via Twitter at We Gage Cage Pod or Instagram at We Gage Cage Pod. And if you can review us, you can do that via iTunes or Google Play Music. Um, and try to get the podcast up on Spotify. Don't know if we're there yet because Spotify is being real coy about whether we can actually be on Spotify or not. Um, but yeah, rate and review. Leave us, yep. you know, some five stars and, and tell us if you please. like us. Please. And um, please. Or you know, if you know us personally, you can just give us a text or a Snapchat. You know, or just give us a five just because you know us. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm still waiting for yours, Mom. Love you, Mom. Good luck with your balls. Guys, just good luck with your balls. Good luck. It doesn't need to be some long, drawn-out thing. With your balls. It doesn't need to be a song. You just need to have some good luck with your balls every now and then. Good luck. Bye. Good luck with your balls. (laughs)